go. Good morning, Rancho Bernardo. Welcome. What a great day to celebrate God's goodness to us. We come into World Communion Sunday all over the world today. All over the world. People are celebrating. Yesterday and today, sometime tomorrow, people will be celebrating the goodness of God. They will be celebrating just as we are, with bread, with juice, with wine. They will be celebrating the gift that we have received through Jesus Christ. And so we are today. We're going to have a number of elements. You've already heard some of it. With different languages, we will be able to uh, rejoice that there are people all over the world. And as you think of them, as you think of people in other places in the world, I want you to think, though, about how there are places where people are doing this in hiding. That there are places where people are smuggling in the elements of communion. Some of them don't have the elements of communion. Some of them are, are taking it by holding hands, becoming the bread with each other, that they together are the body of Christ, and that as they separate, they become morsels that go out to feed the world. That's who we are. That's who we are. We gather together as the body of Christ, the body which we will break the body which we will then partake in. We become the body of Christ, and then we go out to become morsels to feed the world, to feed the world in the goodness of God. And so we rejoice together. Please join me in our call to worship. From north and south, from east and west, we gather to worship you. We gather to remember. We gather to be nourished by bread and cup. With hearts overflowing, we come with joy as God's children. We shed our differences and unite in the image of Christ. Praise the Lord. Let's do that one more, one more time. <laughs>
Together, let us worship God.
Please be seated. The Bible teaches us that the unfolding of God's word gives us light. It gives wisdom to the simple. So let us come to God asking him to give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Please join me as we pray together the prayer of illumination. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone. Let the heavenly food of your scripture nurture us today in the ways of the kingdom through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Scripture reading for today comes from the Old Testament and from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verses 22 to 27. Please listen to the word of God. Be sure to set aside a tenth of all that your field produce each year. Eat the tithe of your grain, new wine and olive oil, and the firstborn of your herds and flocks in the presence of the Lord your God. At the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name, so that you may learn to revere the Lord your God always. But if that place is too distant and you have been blessed by the Lord your God and cannot carry your tithe, because the place where the Lord you choose to put his name is so far away, then exchange your tithe for silver and take the silver with you and go to the place the Lord your God will choose. Use the silver to buy whatever you like, cattle, sheep, wine, or other fermented drink, or anything you wish. Then you and your household shall eat there in the presence of the Lord your God and rejoice. And do not neglect the Levites living in your towns, for they have no allotment or inheritance of their own. The word of the Lord. Amen.
This passage that Mofid led us in is an unusual one because uh, pastors don't usually point to that when they talk about stewardship. Stewardship is usually focused on budgets, meeting budgets, creating budgets. It's not really uh, focused on, um, on partying. And, um, you know, we, we, we aim at stewardship usually uh, from the focus of, of giving from a whole heart or um, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you in what you should give or using your resources wisely or something as simple as um, 10%, giving a tithe. Today I'd like you to think about stewardship in terms of the scriptures that we just read. This, this passage of Deuteronomy where it talks about eating your tithe. Eating your tithe in the presence of the Lord. Where it talks about a tithe, tithing, and celebrating that as partying with God. The purpose of a tithe is to party with God. So let's break that down. The people of Israel were an agricultural people. They, uh, they would raise their uh, herds, their sheep, their goats, their cattle. They would uh, plant their fields with wheat and grains of all different sorts. They would uh, plant orchards, you know, fruit trees and uh, olive trees. Um, they, would have, they would have vineyards and have... Uh, you know, uh, vines of, of all different sorts. And as, as they would do that then, they would come to the end of that and they were told that they would take the top tenth of everything that they had created, bring it to the place where God had established his name, which uh, would have been the tabernacle initially and then would have become the temple of Jerusalem. And there they were to consume it all. We'll get back to consuming. But I want you to think on that. I want you to have that image in your head. And did you catch, did you catch that little part in the middle there where it said that if it's too far away, in other words, if you know, you're, you're up in the north part of the country and it's 70 miles down to Jerusalem, um, and, and if, you were, if you were to drive your cattle there, they would no longer be the top tenth of what you had, had, had raised. Um, you should sell your cattle or your sheep or whatever you have, sell it all, and then take the silver and bring it down and buy anything you want and then consume it. Are you getting this picture? I mean, these people were told to do their work, raise their, uh, their, um, their cattle or, or, or grow their wheat or... or uh, 
you know, manage their vineyards or their groves, and then they were to take a tenth of that, not just a tenth, not just any tenth, but to take the very best tenth, the top tenth. They were to look over what was going on with these animals, with these fields, with these trees, with these vineyards. They were to look them over and figure out like what olives were the juiciest, were the, the biggest, that were pr producing the best oils. What grapes were producing the best wine? And then to bring that to the presence of God and consume it all. I'm lifting this up again for you. Do you get that image? That these people were told that they should get together as a community after they have chosen out the very best of what they had to gather all in one place, all of this bread and wine and, and oils and spices and meats of all different kinds, and then enjoy it, celebrate it. That's not the picture that we've had, at least a lot of us. I mean. The picture we've had is that they were supposed to show up and, you know, after working, 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 <laughs> to, to show up in the presence of God and turn it over into the temple's treasury or to give it to the priests or to simply burn it all up like a sacrifice. Like take the top tenth, the best, and just burn it all up, giving it to God in some flames. And that's not the picture. The picture is that they are to consume it the purpose of a tithe is to eat it all. That's not how most pastors talk about a tithe. <laughs> so let's think about this. What would be learned through that experience? What would be learned by doing that? One of the things that would be learned probably would be that the people had worth. Worth. I mean, these are former slaves who remind themselves every year that they had been slaves, that they had been strangers in a strange land, and that they now could work for themselves, that they had worth, that before they could live and work for decades and never see any touch of the prophet of what they had produced. But now, now, they could take the top tenth, and it was theirs. Think about this, that these folks would have taught their children that this was outside of their history. It would also teach them, I would imagine, like we talked about a few weeks ago, that they could rest. That they could take this enormous break and rest. Because they were gonna show up and spend the time it would take to consume a whole tenth of what they had produced. they would also learn that God was faithful, that God was watching over them, and that their work was in partnership with God. God, the God of the universe, who owned everything. Did God need them to show up? Did God need them to feed him in some way by burning up this tenth of, of what they had? No, God didn't need any of that. But God wanted them. God wanted them. God wanted them to come into his presence and to celebrate with him so that they would know how much he loved them and how they did not need to fear life. God wanted them to show up so, he could, so they could learn how much he loved them and how they did not have to fear life. 
They could know that they had a partner, that there was somebody that they were working with, that God was with them. These people would learn that their work was to make them thrive as a community, as a family, as individuals. Their work was partnering with God to produce an abundant life. That's the purpose of a tithe. That's the purpose of a tithe. So let's talk about consuming. I told you we were going to come back to that. Consuming is fun, isn't it? I mean, there are people who are focused on not consuming. You know, they don't want to gain weight or they don't want to eat this or that, you know, and that, all the rest of that. But even those people will tell you, consuming is fun. It is, isn't it? I mean, if you had the chance to buy anything you wanted to be part of the party, party with God, what would, you, what would you pick? I would pick cotton candy. <laughs> Just saying. There'd be a lot of it. You know, cattle, that's great, you know, but cotton candy, consuming cotton candy is, is great because what we are supposed to learn from this is that God loves us. Now, as most of you know, uh, we went, Becky and I went back east uh, to celebrate our nephew's life, our nephew who died this past year and we weren't able to get together because of COVID. Um, we went back, he died from cancer, he did not die from COVID. But we went back to celebrate his life and it was a great celebration. We had uh, his memorial service on a baseball diamond, he was a coach in that area. He helped some 300 kids to get uh, sports scholarships into college. He was a great guy. And, and um, in the midst of his uh, service as we were having this, it uh, sprinkled on us a little bit and all of a sudden the sun broke through and this rainbow appeared right over us. It was great. But there was a moment, there was a moment on Saturday where the family showed up at my sister's home. My sister has this enormous kitchen and it, it was just like everybody knew this was the moment. It was right before we were supposed to eat, so everybody was piling in, and they all piled into the kitchen, everybody. And all of a sudden, the plates were clattering, and the conversation was clattering, the silverware was ringing, and everybody was talking, and all these smells were filling up the place, and there was this great conversation going on. There were stories going on. My nephew, it was this big, burly guy, and, if he, and he was just full of stories. And if he had been there, he would have just held court at that moment. And we just all ate together. Consuming is fun. And that's the purpose of a tithe. When we start talking about stewardship in the church, we can get lost in budgets and numbers and meeting goals. But stewardship is handling the resources we have been given, that we have received in their most effective way so that ultimately they will take care of us. But more than that, we will be able to produce a party with God and other people, people who can't afford a party, people who have nothing to bring to a party. Remember the Levites? He said, don't forget the Levites who don't have any way of producing anything. Stewardship is handling the resources we've received to their best effect so we can consume it with others and with God. We party with him so everyone gets in. So the people of the world that are all around us, they don't have that. People of the world have to accumulate. 
If they have a partner, that, that, that leads them in the direction of God. That's a good thing in life, to have a partner that they work with, that leads them in the direction of God. Because as they partner with someone else, they get to talk things over. They get to share the experiences, the highs and the lows. And they get to get to a place where they celebrate what they have produced. But ultimately, they're still on their own. They have to accumulate. People of the world have to accumulate to experience their worth, to secure themselves, to find safety. People of the world are looking to find peace through what they accumulate. They need to accumulate. How do I know that? When there's a bull market, when people are making more money than they expected out of the stock market, charitable giving goes down. Think about that, think about that. That when people are flush, when in fact they're doing better than they ever expected that they would, when things are increasing, they give less away. They need to accumulate because it's a scary world. It's a scary world out there and they have to take care of themselves. Jesus tells this great little story about that situation. He says there was this guy who got more than he expected. He got this great yield out of everything that he had produced and so his barns were too small and so he decided that what he would do is tear down those barns and build bigger barns. He had to accumulate. And God said, well that's stupid. <laughs> Tonight's the night you're gonna die. You met, right after the barns are built. That's the night he dies. He doesn't get any of that. Doesn't get any sense of worth. Doesn't get any sense of achievement. Doesn't get any peace. That's not who we are. It's as the people of God partner with God that we discover and demonstrate our worth, our safety, that we are not afraid of life, that we have peace. And God says, the way to, into that discovery is through a party. Does God love us or what? I mean, God loves us. Say that inside yourself. God loves us. Say it out loud. God loves us. God loves us and wants us to know how deeply he does love us and that we do not need to fear life. And he shows us all that through a party. So, the question at stewardship time isn't how much you should give. It's what kind of party do you want to throw? And you see, we're not an agricultural people, so we're handling this in a different way. See, this is the place where the party takes place. So what kind of party do you want to throw? You got to think that through because as a community, you are coming through a season of distrust when you would not be necessarily throwing parties. Did you hear that? You're coming through, out of, a season of distrust. I mean, you just got your first annual report in the last 15 to 20 years. An annual report is supposed to be a report on what your party has done, has been. How you have celebrated the goodness of God. This is supposed to have come into your laps every year. And you just got your first one in like 15 or so years. You are coming through a season of distrust. But right now in this time of transition, things are changing. I want to tell you about your elders. Your elders are going to take on responsibilities here. And every elder is going to have an area of responsibility that they will be overseeing and then bringing back word to the other elders about how things are going, talking it all over. 
Some of them already do that. But as we go into this new year, all of them will be doing that. They all will be bringing this back. And then next summer, as you are halfway through, as you come to the end of your fiscal year, you're going to get a new report telling you how it's gone. So as you think about what you're going to pledge, I want to invite you as you get this to think through moving ahead with clarity. Clarity, because that's what we're going to bring. Clarity over and over again so that you can see where things are going, how things are, uh, how things are going, how you're all doing. What kind of party are you throwing? So, a couple of weeks from now, on the 23rd of October, you're actually going to have a party. One of our life groups has put this together, and we're going to have a party with God. You'll see signs about that, and uh, we'll, we will have great food, we will have great conversation, there will be singing, there will be dancing. We're going to party with God on a Saturday night. A week later, on the 31st, you are being asked to bring back your pledge card as a sign of celebration. It's Halloween. Do not trick us. <laughs> Bring back a statement that says, this is the kind of party I want to be led into. And give that word to your elders because my bet is your elders are going to handle that responsibly and you will love what they produce next year. Let's pray. Lord God, you speak to our hearts about what we have and what we can give and how we can celebrate. You are amazing. And you teach our hearts to celebrate in you and with those around us. So Lord, as we do that, we pray that you will teach us the depth of that celebration how to rejoice well, how to be secure in you, and how not to fear the life around us that everyone is telling us to be afraid of, but to know that you are the one who carries us through anything that happens, and that you are the one we partner with to produce a party that anyone can get into. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. As a family of God, all of us celebrate the world communion with many Christians around the world. Let us together affirm our faith. We believe in one holy, universal Christian church, the unity of the communion of saints of the entire human family. And we believe that this unity of the people of God must be manifest and active in that we love one another, that we give ourselves willingly and joyfully to one another, that we share one baptism together, that we eat of one bread and drink of one cup together, that we confess one name, one Lord, for one cause with one hope, which is the heights and the breadth and the depth and of the love of Christ forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And as we bring our offerings to the Lord, we come with joy and bring all what we have, bring ourselves. And I would like to remind us all that today, that's for the green envelope, don't forget the deacons. Deacons have a great ministry in the church and the community. If you have a special offering for the deacons, please use the green envelope. Also, there is a connection card in the pews. Please, uh, if you have any question, any information you need from the church, if you have something to share, or you would like to be a new member, or participate in one of the activities in the church, please fill up the connection card. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we praise your name that you brought us together into your presence. 
to bless us and to be glorified. Lord, we come and bring our offerings with us, and we pray that you may use it and use each one of us for your own glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ushers, please come forward. come into this time of celebration when we remind ourselves that this table belongs to Jesus Christ, that this is not the table of uh, Rancho Bernardo Community Presbyterian Church, but Jesus' table. And so because of that, anyone who has a relationship with Jesus, anyone who wants a relationship with Jesus, anyone who wonders what it would be like to have a relationship with Jesus is welcome at this table. We join together then in celebrating his goodness to us. In doing that, we remember that on the night when Jesus was betrayed and arrested, that he took bread that was left over after his meal and after he had given thanks, he tore it apart and said, this is my body given for you. Eat of it, each one of you. In the same manner it says that he took the cup And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Our friend Paul tells us that as long as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. 
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. They're also the tangible expression of our faith that comes to us directly from the hands and voice of Jesus. We're gonna go into a special time of prayer and we're gonna start with Mofid. Please join me in prayer. Great and heavenly Father, the one who is and who was and who is to come, who come to you and as we celebrate World Communion, we remember what the Bible taught us, that God so loved the world, and you give your only begotten Son, so ever believe in him will never perish but have eternal life. Today we come to you and we give all the praises to you that in Christ your Son you fulfill your promise when you promised Abraham that in his seed you will bless all the nations of the world and the promise was fulfilled in the seed of Abraham, seed of David, your son. Thank you, Lord, that as we celebrate the world communion together, you remind us that we are not alone. We are a part of a bigger congregation the body of Christ, the one that you bought by your own blood, the one that in one day we will join together in front of your holy throne from every nation, people, tribe, and tongue. And today as we come to participate in the Holy Communion, we confess that no one is worthy. But thank you, Lord, that you accept us in the righteousness of your Son, the one that he was delivered to death for our sin and rose again for our justification, the one who brought us together from all around the world to be one, flesh of his flesh, bones of his bones. So help us, O Lord, as we come and confess our sins, to be assured that you are merciful, gracious. You forgive our sin and you accept each one of us to participate. Not because we are good, but because we come in Christ. Lord, we come as your people and we pray that you may open your hand to feed us and bring us closer to you. And we pray for the Spirit of God to come on these elements. So as we eat and we drink, we know for sure that Christ himself is presented in this bread and the cup. We pray that in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite up uh, at this point a number of uh, people who are going to lead us in a special presentation of the Lord's Prayer. So if they would come now, please. These folks are going to say the Lord's Prayer in a language that they understand, that they know, different from English, and allow us to hear how the prayer would be said in different parts of our world this morning as part of services all around. I invite you to not close your eyes, just to pay attention to what's going on. So let us begin. Me <laughs> And now let's pray together in English. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you all. As they go back to their seats, I want to invite you to uh, take out your cup for our communion time together. As we've heard these words, perhaps we have a taste, just a taste, of what happened on the day of Pentecost when the people of God came forward and began to preach and speak, and they were heard, it says, in languages from all over the world and understood. So I don't know if you're having trouble with yours, but mine. There we go. Let us receive the bread together. And now let us receive the cup. Please join me in prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, we offer our thanks for the, the whole, whole communion, communion of saints, saints witness, witness to, to this feast and, and for, for the, the ministry of, of church churches around, around the world, the world who gather with us today. By this, this broken, broken bread, may we each be restored, be restored for the, the work yet, yet to come. come. By this shared cup, may we each be claimed for the proclamation of your kingdom. At this shared table, may we be united as children of your promise, a children of your word, dying and made new again, sent boldly together into the world as servants of your peace. Amen. As you prepare to go into that world, united now as one as we've gathered around the table, I invite you to stand and in this song, offer your full selves, everything you have to our Lord as we sing, Take My Life. Take my life and let it be God's
Please be seated. I want to share with you some of what's going on in the life of the church. Um, starting a week from now, on uh, Tuesday night, we're going to have a special uh, presentation going on for a few weeks by Ken Blanchard, who's going to lead a seminar called Lead Your Family Like Jesus. You should have received some information. You can find this on our website. It'll be a Zoom book study that'll be on Tuesdays, like I said, starting October 12th at 7.30. So please look that up on the website and there'll be more information next week. Want to remind you that we have a library book sale. First off, it just looks beautiful. Uh, but you should go right into our library and check it out. Uh, you should uh, see if there's any books in there that you would like and uh, take advantage of that. John, I want to thank you for the email that you sent out and uh, your announcement. John, as you uh, probably have heard or you received the email yesterday, um, John is going to be the senior pastor of a church north of us in Arvada, right? Arcadia. Uh, you know what? Arvada's in Colorado. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> still in there. It's still in there. Arcadia. Thank you. Yay. What a great thing. Now I want to talk to you about something else that is on the heart and mind of every person. Masks. I've been approached by a number of people in our congregation about their fear. It's their fear of getting ill. And so I'm asking all of you to wear a mask. You know what? I don't really mind um, how politics play out. They don't really bother me. But the reason I'm asking you to is because we follow Jesus. And what that means to me is we do unto others as we would have done unto us. If you were a person with an autoimmune uh, deficiency of any kind, wouldn't you be thankful if the people around you cared about you that way? So in this place, at this time as we worship together, I'm asking that you wear a mask. I don't think you should. There's churches, my daughter goes to a church in San Marcos, nobody wears a mask in the yep. entire church. Yep, I know. I'm not gonna do it. Okay. And I don't think you should have to. It's not a mandate of the state. I'm asking. I'm asking you to uh, think about this. So, if you would, please, thank you. So along with this, we have another special event happening, and that is that Gio Rosales is leaving us. Yeah. Um, okay, so Gio has been our custodial presence here. So I, before I invite him up there, up, up here, I just want to remind you of a couple of things. The very first thing is, 
your mother doesn't live here, pick up after yourself. <laughs> Secondly, if you go out a door, make sure when it shuts behind you that it shuts. Just make sure the door shuts, okay? Because it's real easy around this place, I've discovered, to have doors just almost shut. So please just make sure it is shut. Those are two big things that will help us. Now, we do have a cleaning service that is in here, and they are taking care of things every weeknight. Every weeknight they're in here working and cleaning things. So we do have that. So we also have some leads on getting folks in here to be a custodial presence. But this guy who has staffed this position on his own is going off to study to be a police officer. He expects to finish up some classwork and to go into the academy next year. And so I want to invite Gio and his family up here. Gio, please. Please, right here. Would you introduce your family to us? Sure. This is uh, my wife, Diana, my oldest son, Ethan, Gio, middle child, and the baby, Daniel. <laughs> Please be seated. Gentlemen, I want to talk to you for just a moment before I let your dad talk, and I want to say to you, I want you to know how proud we are of him how grateful we are that he has been here and working here. But we are very proud of who he is. And the work that he has done has been terrific. And so we are looking forward to how he is gonna live his life out and the things that you guys will learn from him. And your mom. <laughs> so, Gio, if you would like to say anything. Well, um, first of all, I wanna say thank you guys for the memories. Just like I mentioned it to all the staff, there's a lot of members of this congregation that I grew close with. Um, thank you guys for, you know, being out there, supporting me, always telling me that you're praying for me. Uh, when you see me out there working, asking me if I need help with anything. Um, it does break my heart to leave at this moment, but I feel this is the right time. I've been praying on it for a while, and then, you know, God has been opening doors and kind of drawing a path as far as my future. And um, I feel that if I've been asking him for this and things are getting together, like it wouldn't be wise of me for me to ignore it right now. So I feel like I have to take these decisions and um, I want to let you guys know that I will come around. I'm not gonna forget about RBCPC. <laughs> and it's been, it's been rough, but it's been fun and you know, making things um, happen. Maybe a lot of people don't see what goes behind the scenes, but I just want to remind you all that everything I did was, you know, to glorify God, to make sure that everybody's, um, you know, ministry was working well, to make sure that everything was ready for you guys when you guys were, uh, you know, here on Sundays or even on classes to worship. So I feel good and I feel, you know, I feel satisfied that I did my work. Good. We have a special gift that we'd like to give you, and we're going to give it to your wife so she can tell you how to use it. <laughs> okay? Also, also, listen, we have a special quilt that's outside in the courtyard, and um, it's supposed to receive knots from you all. You're supposed to tie the threads together to uh, pray for him. So I'm inviting you all to go out there and do that, and then they will present it to you. So... Thank you, and let me pray for you, all right? Dearest friend, 
We thank you for these friends of yours who love you, obey you, and follow you. We ask your blessing on them all as a family, that you would not only unite their hearts, but also watch over them, keep them safe, guide their every step. We pray for their blessing into your future and the way that you will lead and guide them in all things. Watch over them for us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again. God bless. Would you please stand for the benediction? And I would like to remind us all, the prayer team will be up front. If you have any prayer request or something to share, please come up front. And also, don't forget to pray for those among us who are sick. If you know of anyone who is sick and we are not aware of, please call the church and let us know. And now, people of God, as you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, continue to live in Him, rooted and built up on Him. Strengthen in the faith as you have been taught. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you all. Amen.